Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us, and I say thank you in a particular way if this happens to be your very first time to be hearing the broadcast. Right now, my Bible sits open to the book of Titus, and chapter 3, we begin today to deal with the very last paragraph of the book. We begin at verse 12 today. If you can, reach over, get your own copy of the Word of God, and join me in Titus and chapter 3. I have personally enjoyed this study here in the book of Titus, a study that I entitled for this series, How to Grow Healthy Churches in Unholy Soil. By unholy soil, I refer to the culture in which we live today, in which the Titus found himself there planting churches on the island of Crete. I have a gospel tract in my hand. Do you know what that is? In a moment, I'll explain that. But if you can, get your Bible, join me, Titus 3. Get also something on which you can jot some notes. But let me prepare us for the Bible study time this way. How does the work of missions and church planting get done? How is that supposed to happen? Now, frankly, that's not a question that many people who are sitting in Bible-preaching churches ask themselves. To the average believer, and I don't say this in any uh, negative way, but to the average believer who loves missions, their key thoughts are, how can we support more missionaries and how can we pray effectively for those missionaries that we're supporting? I like that. But if you were a missionary, if you were a leader in the ministry of the gospel, you would be very interested in the how question. How does God's work get done? How does God want this work called missions to get accomplished? Now, people who are in this work want to know that they are doing this work in a way that's aligned with the author of the work, and that author is Jesus Christ. Now, today we come to a passage that sheds a great deal of light on how God wants missions to get done. If missions is important to you, then you need to stay tuned and ponder the verses here, Titus 3, verses 12 through 15. I mentioned a moment ago about gospel tracts, and that word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, gospel tracts, a short written presentation of God's plan of how to have eternal life. We publish about 41, 42 different gospel tracts here, and I want to send you a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. I'll say more about the packet in a moment. One of the tracts that's in that sample packet is this one. Have you found rest? Have you found rest? On the front uh, cover of this track is a picture of a rocking chair on the front porch. There's some firewood stacked up there and man sitting on the front porch in a rocking chair. That's a place of rest. You know that and I know that. Well, I'm not talking about rest for our body, but rest for our soul. Jesus said, if you want rest, come to me. He's dealing with people being saved from sin. Sin. This gospel track, Have You Found Rest, is a tremendous tool because it starts where many a person struggles. They want rest for their soul. And I talk about people uh, and referring to people here, not just in the United States, but all over the world. It's a, it's a human issue, rest for the soul. This gospel track explains clearly how to be saved in a way that you'll get it. Your next door neighbor will get it. The person you work with will get it. Now, at the end of my broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on and give three ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. Do that. Give us your name. Give us your mailing address. We'll send you out a sample packet. It's free. It's free. It's free. We'll send it out normally in the next business day's mail. You're going to find great gospel tools. But then please don't stop there. Look at the tracks. Pick out two, three, four, whatever that you 
say, man, I like those best. I can use those tracks and contact us and say, can I have more of these particular tracks? We'll be glad to give them to you. And we'll do that for free as well. We've been doing it for 80 years now. We're able to do that because obviously many at local church, many individual and some businesses take us on as their, well, their missionary, and they share in all the results of just thousands of people coming to Christ every year. Get this track, Have You Found Rest? If you can't wait to the end of the broadcast, just go to our website, which is Bible Tracks Inc. Dot O-R-G. If your Bible's open, I begin reading Titus 3, beginning at verse 12. Here is what the scripture says. When I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me in Decapolis, for I have determined there to winter. Bring Zenos the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting unto them. There's two more verses there, but let me just hold off. We really won't get past these two here for today. These are not certainly not the most typical verses preached on, but, uh, well, if you've ever read any biographies of missionaries and you have seen that God, frankly, is willing to use any believer who'll surrender their life to the call of God. In reading the New Testament, especially in the book of Acts, you'll see that God used the very well-educated guy, the Apostle Paul, but he also used just a plain old fisherman named Peter and many other people to move the gospel out from Jerusalem to the entire known world. God uses people. On some occasions, those gospel workers worked alone, but frankly, that seems to be the the least used method by God. The vast majority of the times that missions was done, it was done out of a team effort. The passage here, I think, really helps to bring that out. It appears that Paul and Titus were or had been the first church planting team on the island of Crete, but our verses tell us that Paul sent other preachers to Crete, and he was bringing Titus off of Crete, and he wanted Titus to be with him. Also, in verses 14 and 15, we didn't read them yet, but we see there that others on Crete were helping Titus. Uh, We don't know if all of these were laymen or if some of them were full-time missionaries along with Titus. We don't know. But we do know that Titus was part of a team. My title for verses 12 to 15 is this, Our Companion Life. Our companion life. I'm talking about gospel companionship, being companions in doing the work of the gospel. We find here a list of names. These are fellow missionary workers who serve various places at various times and due to the situations and what those situations demanded. Along the way, I'm going to be using a series of R words, like in the word robot, to help me walk through verses 12 to 15. My first word is the word relief. Relief, based upon verse 12. Verse 12, again, says this, that, when I, Paul is writing to Titus, when I shall send Artemis unto the Ortychicus, be diligent to come unto me into Capolis. That's what verse 12 begins. Paul was going to send another missionary to relieve Titus. This would free up Titus to go and be with the apostle Paul and spend time with him, probably the entire winter. Notice Titus was relieved and Titus went to Paul. Why? Well, Titus was working in a place that was not his home country. He was serving in a different culture than what he grew up in. It was good for him to leave Crete and be refreshed and strengthened. Beloved, every preacher, whether they're a foreign missionary or a local church pastor, needs a break from the pressures of ministry, and they need their own souls strengthened by others building into their lives. Local church pastors who serve in their own country and serve in the culture in which they grew up in normally find it easier to find ways to be strengthened and refreshed. But foreign missionaries usually come off their feet 
healed every four years or so, and they can be refreshed. But I have to quickly add here, if these missionaries come off the field and spend the next number of months traveling from supporting church to another supporting church, giving reports, they tend to go back to their mission field more tired than when they left. Somehow we need to rethink this system, I think. Well, our word number one is the word relief. My second R word is the word resting. Still based upon verse 12, resting. Paul, the apostle, was going to spend the winter in Nicapolis. Now, the note we need to make here is this. He was going to be going there, apparently, to rest. Now, if you know much about the apostle Paul... He would get rest, but he could rest only so long. Fairly soon, the spiritual needs of those around him would move him to begin to want to evangelize the people where he was at. Many years ago, I planted a church in the town of Kissimmee, Florida. We had a great time. It was a, one of the most blessed times of my life, my, my Nancy and I, our lives. We just loved that, that ministry there that God gave us. God blessed, and the church became self-supporting rather soon. I stayed there for 13 years as the pastor. Again, just a blessed, blessed time. But in part of that time, we had a pastor and his family from Puerto Rico moved to our town. They were going to be there for what was to be about six months. They were going to get some rest and be refreshed from the ministry. Well, during that time, they began attending our church. and They were a blessing to me. Oh, I was just so blessed to have them there. But after about a month and a half, this pastor began holding a Bible study in his home. You see, there were many Hispanic people living in that area. English was a struggle for them. Obviously, Spanish was their first language, their heart language, and so was it for this pastor and his wife and family. Well, soon this once-a-week Bible study turned into Sunday services. They met on Sunday afternoons at our church, and then the local uh, local church was formed out of those meetings. Why? A physically rested, a spiritually rested gospel servant became recharged on the call of God in his life, and he just couldn't hold back serving in the gospel. Gospel servants need times to get rested and recharged. Jesus did that with his own disciples, did he not? He took them away to a private place. He gave them a chance to talk about the ministries that they had done, give them a chance to talk about the successes and problems. Jesus gave them further training, but they said, come apart and rest a while. Beloved, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, your soul needs to be recharged and refreshed. Sunday services are supposed to be a part of that, but so is your personal time every day in the Lord. Do you spend time every day in the Lord, in his word? Do you read looking for God to speak to you, then pray it back to God? Do you pray for others? You need that. It's going to refresh your soul. I can't go without it or else I don't walk close to the Lord. Dear friend, if you're listening today and you do not know Jesus Christ as Savior, then you are a mission field You are either going to spend eternity in heaven or hell, and according to the word of God, according to the words of Jesus, you need rest for your soul. There's only one way to get this rest. Jesus provides it when he, by his shed blood, removes the sin stain from your soul and gives you eternal life. Receive him as your Savior now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. 
May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.